If I had to pick a Hollywood movie to describe a plane, for the Cub, it would definitely be something like an Indiana Jones adventure. The Dornier Sea Star, which we recently featured in a video, would be some story of an underdog main character that overcomes all the struggles in the end. For the Cessna, think of any movie with an IMDb rating above 7.5. Reliable and well regarded. But today's video is about something different. Absolutely unique and somewhat sad. It's like the hero the world didn't accept, much like Inside Lewin Davis. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's a brilliant film. While we roll the intro, let me know in the comments what movie best describes your favorite aircraft. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and today we're telling a truly fascinating story of the Beechcraft Starship. We're winding the clock back to the late 1970s, when Beechcraft was already a well-known and loved plane manufacturer, and their Bonanza, Queen and King Airs were flown by hundreds of private and commercial pilots. The success of the past models allowed them to accommodate the necessary budget to make a bold, and I mean truly bold, step forward. So in January 1980, Beach began designing not just a new plane, but a new generation. As Beach wanted to keep the luxury flying experience of the top-selling King Air but make the new plane bigger and faster, engineers had quite a challenging task ahead. You know, there are certain things in life that you align with. And in planes, they align with the laws of physics. So, Beach went to its good old friend, and if you watched our video about Velocity V-Twin, you probably already know who influenced both of these planes. That was no other than Bert Rutan, a pioneer of countered planes who had influenced dozens of home-built aircraft projects, and was the head of design for this project too. Rutan founded Scaled Composites, which was acquired by Beach just a few months later to collaborate on this new project, the Beechcraft Starship. Rutan proposed two major ideas that he was confident in, a composite fuselage and a canard wing. Beach agreed, so in 1983, the proof-of-concept plane took to the skies. Despite the fact that composite materials were swapped for aluminum to cut costs, the proof of concept showed great performance, and three full-scale prototypes were built later to refine the design and achieve the final look. Well, getting the final look, especially in aviation, doesn't mean that a plane is getting certified soon. And for Starship, it was even more complicated. The Federal Aviation Administration was particularly picky, as Starship would be the first certified aircraft made from composite materials. And due to the lack of testing data for such aircraft, they, to put it simply, tested it twice as rigorously as they would test any other plane. Despite all the technological and engineering hurdles and the constant ping-pong with the FAA and delays from subcontractors, the first Starship took to the skies at the end of 1988. Now, let's take a closer look at what innovations the bird carried on its wings. As I've mentioned earlier, the design goal for the Starship was to offer all the perks of the current King Air. However, because the King was getting older and older, the new plane should be able to offer even more. This big bird has a length of 46 feet, a height of 12 feet, and a wingspan of 54 feet. While its empty weight is relatively light, at just 10,000 pounds, thanks to composites. As you may already know, the Starship has a canard wing which is the smaller wing in front of the main one. While some studies show that this helps make the airflow more laminar, increasing the lift of the main wing, the main advantage of the canard on the Starship is safety. When the aircraft reaches its minimum speed, the canard wing stalls first, causing the nose to dip slightly, thus avoiding a main wing stall. But Beach went further than just that. The Starship's canard has a variable swing, meaning that it can be tilted forward or backward a bit to counter the flap deployment or retraction. As for the main wing, just look at these massive winglets. Wait a second, those are not just regular winglets. Those are the actual rudders of the Starship. Beach thought that a conventional tail would resonate with the rear-mounted props, so they placed the rudders on the tip of each wing, calling them tip sails. After that beautiful wing, you will find a pair of probably the most popular aircraft engines of the 80s, Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6A engines in the 67A variant. 
Each of them was capable of 1,200 horsepower, and it was equipped with a large 8-foot, 5-bladed Macaulay propeller. But why the pusher configuration? Besides the fact that it's what Burton Rutan is famous for, Beach's ultimate goal was to maintain that quiet and classy cabin of the King Air. And while later we will talk about the additional ways the Starship achieved this, it's obvious that rear-mounted engines are quieter than conventional ones. But let's see what this bird could achieve in terms of performance with its lightweight fuselage and such powerful engines. It could blaze through the clouds at a whopping 335 knots, while the steady cruise was not much slower, 300 knots. That's also impressive. It was capable of climbing almost 3,000 feet per minute. Such speed, combined with a fuel capacity of 565 gallons, gave this plane a range of 1,514 nautical miles, enough to go from New York City to Houston or from London to Lisbon. A major part of such speed and range is, of course, the pressurized cabin. Starship's ceiling was 41,000 feet. And, of course, you need much less fuel to keep going above 300 knots than if you did that at flight level 100. Despite these impressive numbers, there were aircraft that flew higher, faster, and had more range. But they lacked one thing that Beach was famous for. Class. A Beechcraft airplane wasn't just about transportation. Flying a King Air, you could easily end up signing a billion-dollar contract with your business partner right in the sky. It was the ultimate piece of wealth and luxury. So, what about Starship? Beach made sure that this bird looked gorgeous, both outside and inside. Truly, just take a look at this work of art. It has a club seating for six people, with probably the comfiest seats you will ever find in a plane of a similar age. As this bird is capable of longer flights, the Starship has a full-size lavatory and a refreshment center with a refrigerator. Not only drinks were chilled, but passengers could also travel with comfort thanks to a complete air conditioning unit rather than just ventilation. The King Air was praised for its quiet cabin, so for the Starship, Beechcraft used part of the weight saved by using composites to soundproof the whole cabin, making the hum of the props even quieter than before. So, now this all sounds like a breakthrough in business aviation. But why do we have so many Bonanzas and King Airs? But only the luckiest among us have ever seen the Starship at least once. It was $300 million in development to build one of the greatest planes in history. And it surely was one of the best overall of its time. The speed, power, safety, incredible comfort, and a joy to fly, both as a pilot and a passenger. Unfortunately, delays caused by the FAA, subcontractors, and Beach themselves made the Starship enter the market later than expected, and other manufacturers had already manufactured competitive aircraft. And the price of nearly $4 million might have been reasonable only if Cessna and Lear hadn't had their jets, which were faster, had better range, and similar price. The global economic downturn of the late 80s also didn't help with sales, as even popular planes of that time weren't selling as good as they had just a few years earlier. Unfortunately, just after six years of production and 51 total certified planes built, the story of the Starship came to an end. As of now, there are just five airworthy Beechcraft Model 2000A Starships. The story of this bird definitely left me sad. Despite its innovative design and luxurious features, it seems it was just too far ahead of its time. Of course, delays in certification, economic downturn, and competition from other manufacturers played a big part in its downfall, despite all the effort and passion behind its development. Sometimes, the greatest heroes are those who dare to dream big, even if the world wasn't quite ready for their vision. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of the Beechcraft Starship. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I always love to hear your stories. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the skies.